A child's death that has haunted the town of Pekin for the past year. On November 18th, 13-year-old Robert B. was reported as a runaway by his mother. However, we have been in touch with the Illinois State Police and are in the process of entering information of a missing or endangered person advisory. And what happened to Robert B. brought people in Pekin out to search for answers themselves weekend after weekend. Thousands of leads poured into the Pekin Police Department. The search for the teenager coming to a halt on a hot July day when his skeletal remains were found. Okay, so we got a call from an anonymous person and it's kind of crazy because now it seems very well confirmed that Trucks for Kids found a jawbone and a tote lid and a few other things the day before his body was found. Yeah. And now we've heard this from three or four people, um, all of them who were on the search. So it's not like it, this is hearsay or anything else. So what in God's name had to have occurred that these things were found in a separate location and then the next day the body's found? Does that seem weird? I would have to believe that anyone searching that area that found something on that day was searching there with intention. So yeah, I think someone told them to look there. They're not just walking through a field and happen to like kick a jawbone out of the grass. I, yeah, that's, I don't think so. It, it, look, it sounded like a calculated search from Trucks for Kids and it sounds like they absolutely found these items off of a tip or information. So, and then, okay, so they find it. Okay, weird, maybe that's total odd coincidence and it's somebody else's tote and jawbone. But then the next day they find the rest of the bones or, or all the bones, and this is a complete red herring. Um, and then they find all the bones on the Taswell County property. So what that, wow. I just, I have to let that sink in for a minute. I don't know what that means and I, I can't really easily understand what that means. I mean, uh, just processing it initially right now, it, it's, I see it as two different scenarios. One, he was dumped somewhere originally and then moved, right? Now, he was dumped somewhere originally and moved because someone found out someone had spoken to trucks for kids. Yeah. Like it certainly makes sense that he was moved in such a, we'll call it rough and tumble kind of way. His bones seemed spread out. They were exposed to the air. He was, there was a chain link fence in between items that's a six foot tall, like not just like a, like an old, like broken down, like that was, that was stainless steel, like mm -hmm. made or, or assembled within the last few years level of fence. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's not falling through cracks or, or getting pulled through holes. Uh, right. Like, th there, is, there is a divider in between, you know, yeah. parts of evidence in this. Yep. So that's one thing that's always stuck out to me is that, like, if this was a dump, yeah. this is, like, the roughest dump. This was almost put here so that it would be found kind of thing. That's, yeah, that's what's weird. Like Because, I, like, if, I, I just, I've never had to hide a body. Right. But if I were to go through the level of hiding a body, I've got two hours to dig a shallow hole. Yeah. And buy myself some more time before something just gets pulled up from, I, they said that it looked like the body had been, or parts of the body had been dragged by animals. Which is, I, I, don't get me wrong, but how does an animal get a skull over a six foot fence? And I, I'm, again, I'm not saying that's not impossible. It's just, some things about this are not sitting right. Yeah, some, and, it sits out, yeah, it's super weird sometimes, like right. almost too convenient. Right, so it could just be odd, crazy coincidence, like, you know, lightning does strike twice, it's the same place twice from time to time, or same person twice. Maybe it's like that, it's just that crazy, or there's something more to it that we don't understand yet. The tote and jawbone are kind of one of those clues where you're not sure what part of that is based in fact. So I've heard this rumor quite a bit, and I'm curious to see if it's true. So I think it's one of these leads we really have to chase down to see if there's validity to it.
I've heard some speculation about uh, that the area had been searched behind that property, and then it seemed like the body all of a sudden was there two days after trucks for kids had searched. Do you think that there's any chance that the body had been moved? I have not heard that. Mm -hmm. However, uh, just logic tells me uh, that that doesn't make sense because if Trucks for Kids had searched that area in the previous month uh, or so before the body or the remains were found, the remains were scattered. Um, as uh, I, I, I visited the area and, and the flags where the various bones were uh, found were still uh, marked in the ground. And uh, you, it doesn't make sense to me that you would be able to uh, move, move uh, uh, decayed remains that were, had been scattered, it, you know. If, if, that, if, if Robert had been killed elsewhere uh, and his body dumped there, it would have been soon after his death, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Do you think that there is any chance that Robert was still alive after the 17th or 18th? Who's to say? Mm, okay. Who's to say? Yeah. I mean, I could... Everybody's got their uh, their opinions. As a news as a news reporter, I can go home and uh, talk to my friends about what I think might have happened. Of course, absolutely. Uh, I can say that, uh, and and it's been maybe uh, this should have been discussed earlier. What is on the record is that the uh, the body was found on property owned by a woman who lived nearby, mm -hmm. uh, within a, a quarter mile or so. Uh, the property is off of Route 29, off of a side road, a dead end side road, uh, off of 29, um, uh, in a rural area, uh, semi-rural area, behind or, well yes, behind a shed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was in a, uh, a, 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 hidden, a hidden location, off the road behind a shed in bushes, okay. Mm -hmm. Well that property is owned again by the, uh, a woman who lives nearby who has a nephew who, uh, according to the police, uh, is involved in the investigation. He has not been charged. What uh, we found interesting is that this man uh, subsequently, and after the body was found, after Robert was found, uh, was charged with a burglary and he was free on bond and uh, he did not have permission to do this, but he uh, was found, I think, in Massachusetts. Uh, a warrant had been out for his arrest because he had fled on bond. Yeah. And uh, how he was found, I don't don't know, but it's not very often that uh, a man uh, on a burglary case uh, is identified and and brought back. It's like it's a burglary case. Yeah. Now, if he commits a crime, uh, if anyone commits a crime or, or gets encounters the law uh, nowadays uh, with modern communication, you're going to find out that you're going to learn quickly enough that there's a warrant for his arrest in Illinois. Yeah. Um, well, he was brought back and a bond was set at $300,000 for a burglary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the charge was eventually dismissed. Um, oh. I cannot recall the, uh, the details of it. What connection this man had with uh, anybody involved with B, such as Lisa B, um, police won't say. But they say he is involved. What do you think it means, um, and again, if this is too speculative, just let me know, but what mm -hmm. do you think it means that there was a uh, $300,000 bond? Do you think the cops, do you think that means that the cops might have been holding him. It's very unusual to set a $300,000 bond on a burglary case. Right. Illinois Route 29, they found the body just a few miles up the road. Mm -hmm. um, Illinois Route 29 is one of the most traveled roads in this area. Oh, wow. Um, and I took that road home every night. I take, the, you know, when I lived in South Pekin, and um, somebody would have seen Robert walking along that road. Mm -hmm. A little boy with no coat, no hat, um, I, I don't think he had a hat on, but he had no coat. Uh, he was very small in stature for a 13 year old mm -hmm. um, and walking down, uh, you know, a heavily traveled state highway 
with cars passing and, and semis passing, somebody would have seen him. Absolutely. And uh, um, I would have called the police if I had seen a, a little boy walking along that road. I had the opportunity to speak to Matthew, who was driving home from work and believes that he saw Bonsai the Monday or Tuesday after he went missing. So it was probably Monday or Tuesday when I was driving home. I actually tried to go back through my text messages because I thought I texted my wife like after, shortly after I saw a young male walking on VFW Road. They were on the north side of the road and they were heading west. I work in Morton, so I did work in Morton, so I drove that route for 10 plus years. And I, they, real, they, they had redone the road previously before that, they kind of widened it, and, but I had never seen anybody walking on the road before, ever. And, and honestly, to this day, that's the only time I can recall somebody being walking on it. So it kind of caught my eye, so I kind of looked for like a disabled vehicle or somebody needs help, and I kind of, you know, they're just walking along, so I just kind of turned it off, kept going home, and as I got home, um, I start thinking, I wonder if that could be that young boy. Like, what, you know, what reason would somebody have walking out there? Yeah. So that was when I, I kind of went home and told my wife. And at this, that time, it was already, by the time I got home and thought about it and talked to her, it was already dark. So I was like, what's the chances of finding them now? Yeah. And I said, it's probably not them. So I kind of dismissed it. Like, that was kind of the end of it from there. Didn't think about it again until they said where they found his body. And I was like, holy cow, like that's not very far from yeah. where I had thought I possibly could have saw him. It's like a four lane highway on the very edge of town. Like there's really no residences out there. There's a, it's kind of built for a, a pass around through the city for like trucks and stuff is why they kind of gave it a second. Like a, that's why they widen it and stuff. But it's just not, you don't see anybody walking out. There'll be no, you know, there's nothing out there like you know, unless you were a hunter or something like, I've seen hunters, but they're not walking the road. They're, you know, trucks right there, stuff like that. So now I think we really have to take into consideration that we have three people who seem like valid, legitimate people to me who have seen Robert um, anywhere from three to five days after he went missing. And I think we need to think about what that means. Does that mean that he was initially a runaway and then met with foul play? Or is this whole thing a red herring? Um, and I don't think these guys set up it as a red herring by any means, but I think that they potentially could have seen somebody who was not Bonsai. Um, it's just the thing that is really strange about it is you have three eyewitnesses who saw him within three to five days of him going missing. They all see him at different times of day, either on VFW Road, which is not a road that would be commonly walked down, or along railroad tracks um, through the middle of the woods. And we have one of them, the boat being the bow hunter, who is absolutely 100% convinced it was Bonsai, and the other two eyewitnesses strongly believe it was Bonsai, but are you know not 100% sure. Um, but they did want to come forward and at least say that they believe that they saw him. So I think it's interesting. Um, could it mean nothing? And could there have just been another boy who potentially looked like Bonsai or was walking to and from there? Um, you know, I, I would love to learn more about that. If there was a child that was walking along those roads that somebody knows of, um, that can clear this up as it's just a mistaken identity or if it actually was Bonsai and, um, you know, which is absolutely upsetting because the bow hunter had called in his tip and nobody came out and searched for him. So it's really upsetting to think about that he may have still been alive. So I think we have to keep exploring this tip because I'm not really sure what that means yet. Well, it seems even where Robert was found and some of the other places we've been where woods were involved, it feels like there's a lot of partying places in the woods around here or even homeless people living in the woods. Have you heard anything about that? Or it just seems like I haven't really heard of that much before. It seems like it's kind of free or it seemed more frequent in this town. I don't know if it's just because of where, if it happens everywhere and I just hadn't really heard about people doing that. I think, um, I don't think Pekin's unique to that either, but Pekin does have a homeless problem. Yeah. They have a good homeless shelter at the Salvation Army, but it only has a small capacity. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, and I've been to them, um, tents down by the river. Um, I don't know, I've been gone for a year, um, but I, as a reporter, I went down there um, years ago and there were several tents set up by the river. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, just makeshift blankets tied around t trees and staked out and uh, um, 
you know, people people don't have places to go. Yeah. You know, we have uh, several housing, uh, low-income housing places, um, but there are long waiting lists for those. Yeah. Um, I mean, people wait four years sometimes to get into public housing. Yeah. Um, and it's just getting worse, you There's know. Such a need for it, yeah. Yeah. Especially because this is a, um, you know, a, a county seat. Yeah. Again, this is where the services are. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a bus system so people can get back and forth to the grocery store and stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're going to flock to here because this is where they can get what they need. Yeah. So, um, yeah, th it, there's a homeless. They do a homeless count every year, or they used to. I don't know if they still do. Yeah. But it's not unique to Pekin. Yeah. East Peoria has a homeless problem. Peoria has a huge homeless problem. You know, I drove over by there. It's a very poor area. Yeah. Very poor area. You know, it's uh, one of the worst areas of Pekin, the south side is. Okay. Um, there are some very neatly kept homes, um, you know, and, and then there is that. Yeah. You know. So, have you been over by there? Yeah, 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 we went all around there. Yeah, too, I, I like to see things because then it helps me understand how far things are from each other, yeah. what logistically, because sometimes I can get, take things off my list right away by looking and being like, oh, that's actually not there, it's not possible, you know? So, yeah. I like to see where people live and where the body was found, and I think it really helps put things into perspective because that's another thing, like, with the, when you look at, when you hear the news reports, it talks about rural Tazewell County is where his body was found, but really it was found on the edge of Pekin and Peoria. It wasn't like um, 20 miles out. It was, yeah. it's really uh, the edge of town. So yeah. that, it was like, oh, okay, that's not that far. Yeah. Like that makes me feel it's more someone within rather than, uh, you know, truck driver coming through town or something. I didn't know, you know, where they found him at. Yeah. I'd never been there, didn't know where it was at. I didn't find out until recently that Jessa and Keith Brackett used to take my son there when they would cut grass. Oh, to the property he was found at? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Jess's name didn't actually come up till later in my investigating, and um, she is a young lady uh, who lived with Lisa up until about nine days before Bonsai went missing. Um, it sounded like she had kind of lived with her for a couple months, but she hung out with a lot of the same people Lisa did. And I didn't even know where that was at. Yeah. I've been to the, his memorial once, and a friend of mine took me because I had no clue where it was at. Yeah. So she had to take me and show me where they found him at because I had no idea. How did you find out that he had been found? I found out on social media. I was in a psychiatric unit. Um, I had went off the deep end. I had tried to kill myself twice. Um, once when Banzai was missing. And then when they found him, it really hit me hard. Yeah, because then you just know it's, there's no more hope at that point. I kept hoping and hoping and praying, and I never lost hope that he was gonna come home. But not the way. Yeah, not that way, huh? And you still don't have him home. I still don't have any home. All yeah. I know is the cops told me he was he was killed somewhere else and placed where they found him at. Yeah. And they don't even know where. According when I, when I talk to the coroner, because I keep up to date with the coroner. Yeah. They said that all they knew is he was killed somewhere else and placed where they found him at. They couldn't tell me when. Mm how long he'd been gone, nothing. So they didn't know how long the body had been there, they just know it wasn't originally there. Yeah, they just knew it wasn't originally there, it had been placed there. Yeah. And that they found a rope next to his body, and the same rope 
that they found next to my son's body, they also found the same rope in Keith Brackett's house. Because when the police searched Keith Brackett's house, the same design rope was found, but they couldn't positively ID it as the identical rope. Okay. Because they couldn't get no nothing off of the rope that they found next to my son's body. Okay. And did the coroner say if the rope next to the body, was it definitely part of something that happened to him? Did they know or was it just something? All that they know is the coroner said he died of homicidal violence and suffocation. Homicidal violence and suffocation. Yep, okay. suffocation. They said he had been suffocated to death. Did they say what state his body was in when they found him? It was just all bones. All bones, okay. That's what I thought. Right. They said that they found part of him here at the side and then part of him over here, so they, he wasn't even to, together. Yeah. It's like they just took him and just threw his bones. Yeah. Disregard for people for life. Yeah. Somebody like that is, is sick. Oh my God, absolutely. So do you know who actually found his skeleton? I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who found him. Did you ever suspect that Keith did anything after hearing some of that? Did you? It, it made me wonder. It made you it, wonder. It made me really wonder because it brought me back to the, all, all the comments when he always said that he liked young girls. Mm -hmm. Well, if he liked young girls, maybe he liked. Yeah, that's not a far stretch. Is <laughs> just friends with you or is that how do you know her? Um, she used to sleep in. They, um, where Keith stayed at, it was his dad's house. Okay. And they had tents out back in the behind the house, and they always slept in tents. And that's where he stayed at. And she, she told me that, you know, Keith was weird. Like, she told me she goes, he's bad. Yeah. That's all she would tell me was he's bad. You think she's just scared or? She, I don't know. She like if she freezes up. Yeah. And she won't say anything. It's like, I don't know if someone's threatening her, if she's afraid of somebody. But it's not just her. Other people will not come forward. They, they're afraid to. How long had you known Keith Brackett for? When we moved to Pekin, I didn't know anybody yeah. in Pekin at all. And I really didn't know Keith. You know, I knew the kids hang, hung out at there. That was only because he bought the kids alcohol, drugs, what weed if they wanted it, that's what they got. Yeah. You know, he, I knew it was weird acting because he would wear pink Hello Kitty pajamas, paint his finger and toenails, pink or purple. Yeah. So I knew right off the bat he was out there. I think one thing that's really important to note here is that Keith is transgender. Um, now granted, being transgender has no bearing on this case. I don't believe transgender, there's anything wrong with being transgender and I don't believe it makes you a murderer. But is what it can do is make you an easy target. So I think really there are three possibilities here. Keith Brackett, yes, absolutely could have killed Bonsai. Um, Keith Brackett could have helped hide the body or Keith Brackett has been set up as a patsy, um, which being transgender, I feel like made him a really easy target. When you hear people describe him, they always describe him as weird or different. And if it's just because he was a weird dude, that's obviously totally fine. If it's because he's transgender though, then that makes me question if he's being targeted. So I think that when we start to introduce the stuff about Keith Brackett, we just need to keep an open mind that we have somebody who could potentially be used as a patsy or we could potentially have someone involved in the crime. So I think that we just need to kind of keep an open mind and really look at this evidence from um, an evidentiary standpoint and try to see what it means to this case. And would you say that Keith and Lisa were pretty good friends? Yeah, we was, everybody was good friends with everybody. Okay. And I mean, that's how close we were. We, the whole South Side called each other family because all of us kids took care of each other because, you know, we all had the same things in common. Um, the whole tent thing, Brackett's lion, he had a grad sale. He sold it to friends. Yeah. With I mean, the missing really, rope. That's really telling, though, that it's almost like, okay, we all agree it's the rope. 
but now he's saying somebody could have taken it. Like, that's kind of crazy. Like, okay, so we're basically saying that it rope came from that tent setup. But it's funny, and, and you got to sit and think where I'm at, and, it's, and I'm, I sit and think about this stuff, and this is what we went over in meetings behind closed doors with Chief and Federal and State and Rainey, so many Seth, so many, you'll hear me say Seth, but it's Detective, it's Rainey, it's Detective Rainey and Seth. Yeah, okay. With Seth so many times, and Josh from State, that um, when they came forward, when them came forward and said, we bought his tent and the rope was missing. Yeah. Now, what the hell? Right. You know, it's like, and I said, I have this that says this with rope, and you're saying, she goes, I already contacted police, yeah, detective, but I didn't know that that was your brother, and I'm going, yeah. Oh. What made them contact the police department? The whole situation with the um, rope. How? Being tied up with the rope in her buying the big tarp and the rope missing. And then I said, wait a minute, no. So stop and really think. Mm -hmm. I have in Keith Brackett's words that I turned over about the rope yeah. being thrown away. Yeah. Somebody actually purchased it at a garage sale that he's trying to get rid of evidence. Something interesting to consider here is that Keith Brackett's name continues to come up. So he actually lived physically about two blocks from Lisa's house and right in that neighborhood and was part of that community and a lot of people know him in that community. Um, and then he had a relative that also lived out by where Bonsai's body was found. And it's about two miles from where Lisa lived and where Keith actually lived. So this property that he was found behind is one of his relatives and he used to mow the lawn there. So I think it's just important to differentiate that we are talking about two pieces of property here. When I went and talked with Terry, one of Lisa's neighbors, um, we were talking about the house that Keith Brackett lived in. So that's the house that's about two blocks from Lisa's. And uh, when they did find his body, what, what did you see or what happened then? I was at work that morning um, I came home from work and we just started dinner. I told my husband what was going on and we watched the news that night. Mm -hmm. And then later on about, I would say 6.30, 7 o'clock, um, police cars started showing up in the area. And I get kind of nosy or concerned when mm -hmm. There's police cars. I, I want to know who my neighbors are. I would be too. <laughs> and then we started seeing state cops and we started seeing county cops and city cops and the whole street was full of them yeah. all the way around the corner. They were taking boxes mm -hmm. and putting them in trunks of police cars. Yeah. Um, they looked to be sealed, just brown boxes. Um, Keith's aunt was kind of hysterical mm. because she didn't know what was going on. She didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. She didn't understand that there was a search warrant to where they were allowed to do that. Yeah. Um, they've had Keith in handcuffs a couple different times throughout the entirety that I was outside. Mm -hmm. And then they finally had to take him down to the police station and take her down to the police station. From what I have seen with Keith, he's a little bit flighty. Mm -hmm. he, he's not all there. Um, he wants to let everybody know that he didn't have anything to do with it, even though his house was the one that they were taking evidence out of. So what was the day like when you finally found out that we knew? How convenient. That was my first reaction. How convenient that his bones showed up that day. That area had been searched already by several people, and yeah. several people from our group had searched those areas. Yeah. And uh, there was nothing there. There was nothing found there. Yeah. And I know a lot of people were like, because they realized that his bones were found there. You'll hear a lot of people from the chat groups, oh, I smelled something over there during the wintertime. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> 
I mean, I realize you think you did, but you didn't. Yeah. I mean, you you would know the difference between a decaying corpse and a rotten animal. It's very distinct. You would know the difference between a sewer smell and a decaying body. Yeah. Lisa knows something. You know, deep down, she knows. It's just getting it out of her. Because, I'm sorry, the woman is a habitual liar. She says she can't remember this, she can't remember that, but yet she could remember the color of sleeping bags and, you know, like they're saying on Facebook. She don't remember being at my house. Oh, is that what she that said? That came up one yeah. time also. Um, she had to verify it with me that she was at my house. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you don't remember coming over with Savannah Haley and... Oh, like, yeah, I remember. I remember now. You were talking about the sleeping bag um, being... I had seen that on Facebook oh, earlier. Oh, you saw that on Facebook, okay. About the trailer that oh. the mattress and whatnot was in. Mm. There was a sleeping bag on the, on the mattress. Yeah. And I guess Lisa had stated something about that was the same color or looked like one the Keith Brackett mm. had. Yeah. That's another person. Yeah. That was literally at my house, too. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard. That's what I heard is Keith Bracco was at your house. I definitely had heard no. that. No. <laughs> yeah. Don't know the man. Yeah. Don't know him. Don't know oh, him so from... you've never even met Keith Bracco? Nope. Yeah. I don't know this the man from good. Adam or Eve. Oh, the sleeping bag is still here. The sleeping bag is? Wow. That's crazy. Now look, Ash. Do you see? Do you see the outline? Oh, whoa. This was red. The sleeping bag is still here. That I can't is surprising. Believe... All the cans. I told you all the soda cans. Did Bonsai have a sleeping bag? Not like that. Okay. Steph, look. See the outline? This is what I found out here that day, and this is what they were supposed to call in. And they never did. So do you think the police ever even came out no, here? No, I don't. They never asked where it was. I'm confident that I can do this in about an hour. You think an hour? I think I can walk from here to Lisa B's house in an hour. We've encountered these train tracks a couple times, it seems. Back here, in the wooded lot that I just came out of, I maybe am 400 to 500 feet from Robert's remains. You guys can see it down there. This creek is called Lost Creek. So here we go. It's been 14 minutes right now, and I feel like he is maybe a fourth of the way, so he might have been pretty close on the hour. Oh, and here he comes, I see him. That's crazy. Okay, so 50 minutes, so he was actually dead on. It's about an hour until he gets to Robert's house. So I think that's pretty, pretty amazing. So what, uh, I mean, how did you feel? Like, it seemed like oh, you were right. You were dead on. It was like almost an hour. It was almost an hour, I felt. Yeah. And I mean, there were a couple different spots where I stopped. There's a couple tricky areas in that case. Um, one area in particular is if you are on those train tracks, you need to walk across a bridge or you need to essentially walk down through some brush to get onto another set of train tracks. Yeah. 
the train tracks that you start on are above the train tracks that you end on. And the train tracks that we ended on are the same that saw him on. Okay, okay. So I, yeah. I was wondering. I was like, I felt like there had to be some, because you could see a curve too. And I was yeah, like, there's, there's a couple jumps, but right before you start to walk across the Illinois River, um, you, you walk across just like another like mini bridge, but it's just like an industrial train track bridge. So yeah. there's no road or anything like that. You're just walking over a set of train tracks, and then I walked down, got onto the other set, and then walked towards Coke okay. Street. Okay, okay. I'm not saying that this is absolute because it's doable, but it's definitely very doable. Yeah. And if, if this kid has walked it before or had someone walk it with him before, it'd be easy to do. Yeah. Okay, wow, I just got the photos, and it looks like... Looks like a jawbone, a vertebrae, a tote lid, a balaclava, and some gloves. And my understanding from what you were saying is this was found the day before Bonsai's bones were found. Okay, and let me just make sure I'm understanding you correct. Is what you're saying is there was a Peking cops never even came to look at these items even though they found them based off a tip that was given to Trucks for Kids and that the Pekin cops didn't come when these items were found. It was Bartonville and Peoria. 